Hello, welcome everyone to this awesome and amazing um, discipleship uh, class, Discipling New Christians class. Um, I actually encourage and uh, I, I would, my prayer would be that that those of you who are, um, who are going to stick stick this out and um, follow this uh, these teachings and this material with me, um, that you guys would uh, grab your Bibles, um, your highlighters, your Bibles, underline um, just different scriptures that we're going to be following and learning together. Um, we're on this journey together, so. Uh, with that, with that being said, I want to uh, thank you guys for coming on to um, to my channel. Please disciple me, um, and uh, I encourage you guys to check out my website. is uh, called uh, please disciple me dot com. Um, you're free to to look at the different videos and teachings that that I'm putting up on the website, and you're free to share them and with other people and as you're being as you're led um also i'm looking for uh for other believers and other um uh, born again christians and even people that don't know the lord that want to come and um and help disciple other people and and uh, just be encour encouraging to one another and uplifting to one another and just to build friendships and relationships um so that we could together advance the kingdom of god and just be there to help one another as the bible says iron sharpens iron so with that being said um, we'll go ahead and get started it says here a uh, definition when we speak of discipling a new christian what do we mean actually before i uh get into this i i, I want to it's, it's let's pray we can pray uh that god would lead us and and open our eyes and our spiritual eyes and ears to hear and see um, as we read and, and hear the word of God. Um, so let's go ahead and let's, let's go ahead and lift this up to prayer. So Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you and praise you for your word, God. Um, we thank you that as we as we apply um, the, the principles and teachings um, that are have been given to us freely. Uh, in, in the Word of God, that um, that we would have ears to hear and eyes to see um, supernaturally, God, and, and that we you would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Um, that as we as we read these scriptures and we read through these uh, different chapters, Lord, that uh, that you would help to mature us and to grow us. Um, into uh, trees of righteousness um, that walk in, in rooted and grounded in love and power and a sound mind. And we thank you, God, that all distractions um, are, are are put aside for our time to uh, to spend with you in um, in the Word. And we just our our whole goal is to. Um, to be the best um, men and women uh, disciples for you, Lord, so that we can make disciples, so that, so that they can in turn make disciples, and there just be a bunch of disciples running around glorifying you and in, in all that we do. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, so here it says, uh, when we speak of discipling a new Christian, what do we mean? It says here, helping new Christians to grow in their relationship with Christ. So, what do we? So, what, when we speak of discipling a new Christian, what do we mean? It, so, it means helping new Christians to grow in their relationship with Christ. And it says here that we can go to uh, Colossians chapter two, verse six and seven. So, I'm going to open my Bible and go to that Colossians chapter two, six and seven, and I. Like I said, I, um, you guys are welcome to go open your Bibles with me. I want to underline all these. Things. So, uh, if you have them highlighted for future references. So, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. My Bible says, 
And I'm reading out of the uh, what is it, the King James Version. It says, uh, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Again, it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So that means that we're supposed to, as we have received him as a free gift, the Bible says that it's, uh, the salvation is a free gift. So, but as disciples, we're supposed to go take that free gift and we're supposed to um, be established in the faith, which means we're growing, we're growing more and more in the faith and we're being rooted and built up in him as we are, are being established in the faith and we're being, and, and as we have been taught. So right now we're being taught as well. Um, and bounding therein with thanksgiving. So we want to make sure that we're always thankful um, that we're able to be teachable. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there are not teachable and they want to pick and choose what what they want to learn and, and that's not the way that's not the way it's not the way it works. Um, you know we have to, the Bible says that man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So when we, uh, like for instance, I'm, I'm going to use myself. You'll hear, hear me using myself as an example a lot of times because um, it's just that's just what I do a lot when I'm teaching. Um, so like, for instance, God wanted me to, to go through um, Genesis to all the way through Revelations. And that's also on. Um, on my uh, YouTube channel, it's it's called Holy Bible, and on the website, pleasedisciplemy.com, um, Holy Bible. So every day I'll be reading, you know, Genesis one, Genesis two, Genesis three, Genesis four, five, six, seven, all the way through, and then and then on to the next book, and the next book, and the next book, and the next book, all the way through to Revelations. And some days, I you know, like especially at the beginning of the genealogies and stuff, you know, it, 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 we have to be. We have to, even though they're, it's it's kind of redundant, I guess, or what, it's just he begot so and so, and he begot this, and she begot him, and he begot this, and begot that, and this and that, and this. Well, what we're doing is we're um, what we're doing is we're we're abounding therein with thanksgiving, like it's talking about here in verse seven. So we're abounding therein with thanksgiving. So we're we're constantly thanking God for even having the desire to um, to to read and to desire to feed on on the Word of God because the Word of God is is Jesus. He is a tree of life. Uh, we want to be we want to be eating and drinking from the from the garden from the the tree of life from. The Bible, Jesus says that you drink of, of this water and you'll never thirst again, you know. And um, So we're, we're going to just constantly be uh, going over these different scriptures. And uh, I'm going to just go over it one more time. Uh, it says here, when we speak of discipling a new Christian, what do we mean? Helping new Christians to grow in their relationship with Christ. So let's read that. Let's read this together. Those of you who have your Bibles. Verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus as Jesus, I'm sorry, Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. You guys are more, more than welcome to pause this video, because uh, I'm already pre-recording this, um, so by the time it reaches you guys, you guys will be able to, to pause it. So you guys go ahead and, and stop and, 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 and read this. These two verses, uh, it's it's just, it's really good that when you uh, read the Word of God for yourself, like that's why I do, that's why I read the Word of God, um, because I, I learn better when I'm reading out loud. So we'll go on to the next one. What is our goal in discipling new Christians? Our goal is to see them become mature in Christ. 
So our goal is to not only see others become mature in Christ, but our goal is for us to become mature in Christ. We want to be mature in Christ. And what does that mean and what does that look like? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Ephesians is, uh, those of you who are learning where the books are, if you go back a couple books, you'll find Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, Till we all come in, in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, what it's saying here is, what is our goal in discipling new Christians? What is our goal as Christians, period? This is our goal. This is what, this is what being a, a Christian looks like. This is what Christians should memorize this verse. This is a great verse to memorize. Um, so, so what is our goal in discipling new Christians? Our goal is that we would come into the uni unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the full, fullness of Christ. So we want to become like him. We want to be sound like him. We want to walk like him. We want to talk like him. We want to be like Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's what discipleship and being a disciple is all about. And it can be done. We can be like Jesus. We can do the things Jesus did because he says we can and because the holy spirit the same holy spirit that that you and i have he jesus had that that he was able to overcome and um do the things that he did because we have the same spirit that he had all right so it says here the marks of maturity Read the following Bible passages. What are the marks of maturity that we should be aiming to see produced in the lives of those we disciple? Again, read the following Bible passages. What are the marks of maturity that we should be aimed to see produced in the lives of those we disciple? So we want to read these, read these passages. And these are, the, these are the passages that will mark the maturity that we should be aiming for in our disciples. And, and even for us, for that matter, those of us that are teaching the word, you know, we want to make sure that, that <laughs> especially if we're teaching the word, we, those of us who are, that's why the Bible says that those who teach the word are going to be held more accountable because we're teaching the word. We need to be, be teaching the word with, um, we need to be teaching the word truly and rightly. I mean, we have to be rightly dividing the word of God. So that's what I'm doing and I'm trying to do my best, my ability. I'm not trying to get ahead of what the Bible is trying to say. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to dig into these scriptures. And we're going to find out exactly how to be mature in Christ and what we're to aim for and how we, our lives are supposed to look as disciples. So, go ahead and open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, all the way to 16 we're going to read. So, verse 4 says, it was he, Christ, here let me, let me um, zoom in on this so that way we could read it better. Okay, let's see here. It was he, Christ, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, 
to prepare God's people for works of service. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to say those of you who um, who are serving the Lord or who are disciples or who are trying to be disciples or are, are studying along with me and are, are being discipled through this material, um, we we want to make sure that we know uh, what what is our office. You know, there's, so he says that so there's an office of apostles. There's an awful office of prophets. There's an office of evangelists, office pastors, office teachers. So these are the fivefold ministry gifts and our offices. Um, we can do all these things because the Bible says we can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens us. But there's always one office that we are, I guess, best at, right? Um, that we're always that will always be who we are. Like some people like evangelizing. Like for instance, I love evangelizing on the streets to people, you just people I don't know, strangers. That's, you know, I like to do what I do for as evangelist, an evangelist. So that's my office as an evangelist. But there's, there's pastors out there that aren't evangelistic, that, that, that aren't, that they're more like um, to themselves and just, you know, when they get behind the pulpit, they can they can preach and all do their pastoring and all that, but they're not they're not really evangelistic like that, you know. Or, or there's teachers that, or vice versa. There's prophets and just in this and type of thing. So we want to know why we want to know our office so that we can be best used in our office to um, to best glorify God. So it says, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So until we all have reached unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. So there it is right there. We want to become mature in Christ, reaching unity in the faith. Um, so it, it's very important. That's why it's very important uh, that the unity of the, of the faith is very important because some people, you know, everybody is everybody is 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 different. Everybody's in different um, walks with God. Some people have been walking with the Lord for a long, long time, and those ones should be, you know, more um, walking more in in holiness and righteousness and in the fear of God than than the ones that just came to God. I, I mean, we have to be growing and maturing uh, in our faith. And, um, you know, a lot of times people will, um, I've seen the other way around, like I've seen people that barely know the Lord that are on fire for God and people that have been serving God for 20, 30 years. And you're just, they're just like, you know, they're not really doing anything for the Lord. You know, they just figure like, oh, I've already done all, done my work for God and <laughs> just chilling out now. Um, we're supposed to always be, um, maturing and, and uh becoming more mature in the lord so it says attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of christ then we will no longer be infants here we go tossed back and forth by the waves um so that's what happens when when you're newbies in in, in uh in christ um, more than likely you're going to be tossed to and fro like 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 you're in like in a wave and in the storm and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. That's why very, very important to, uh, to not follow man, but to follow God, to follow the word of God, Jesus. Don't follow man's teachings, man. Don't worship men. There's a, there's a difference between honoring and honoring a man and, your fellow man in Christ or your pastor loving them and but we want to be following Jesus uh, instead speaking the truth in love we will in all things grow up into him who is the head so we need to be speaking the truth in love so the truth can be spoken in love whether it be something that somebody doesn't want to hear that's that's speaking the truth in love, but there's a way of speaking it 
if you're if you're correcting somebody and you think that you're being loving and you're being harsh harsh you don't want to do that um, there's actually a teaching that I uh, on, on my uh, YouTube channel uh, it's a pastoral care teaching uh, that just that it describes and talks about about exactly what we're talking about here um, so from here from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work so with that being said this is from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament so that's this is why we need uh, you know the body of christ we're not supposed to be doing everything by ourselves we're not supposed to be uh even though we can we can we can do everything we could be yeah, we all things and all that it's just not healthy it's healthy to be part of a part of a of, 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 a, of a group of believers that's going to encourage you and it's going to help you in different areas to be built up and to be um to grow into that maturity that it's talking about here um because i like like i said here let's let's go back to um to verse 11 it says oh no verse 12 to prepare it was to prepare to prepare god's people for works of service so that the body of christ may be built up so that's what we're doing we're preparing one another for works of service so that the body of christ may be built up the body of christ is not just yourself you're not just the, you're not the body of christ or i'm not the body of christ we are part of the body we are part of the body parts of the body like the hands and the feet and the legs and the knees and the neck you know the, the, it's it comes by it's 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 the group it's the whole the whole family it's the whole um the body the body of christ so so we want to make sure that we are um growing and building ourselves up in love as each part does its work all right the next next verse is colossians chapter 2 let's go there let's go to colossians chapter 2 verse 6 through 8 he's gonna re they repeat themselves again so it says so then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord continue to live in him so when we receive Jesus as Lord whether it be whether you just received him as Lord tonight today earlier today last week a month ago a year ago five years ago the bible sa says paul says continue to live in him we we need to continue to live in him rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as we were taught so we have to we can't be wavering and going to and from like the Bible says up top, like we we're just talking about, we have to be rooted and grounded in Him and, and in the Word of God, day in and day out, fighting the good fight of faith, and overflowing with thank thankfulness. So we need to be thank. That's what the Bible says that we enter His gates with praise and enter His courts with thanksgiving. So we need to be continually thank thanking Him and praising Him in all things. Verse eight: See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy there's going to be a lot of people out there you guys um that and girls women ladies that are going to try to um for their own selfish ambitions and reasons to try to get you to you know that 
it's 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 hollow and deceptive philosophy when people try to uh to to stray from what the word is what we just read basically about being united in the faith right as one so some a lot of people what they do is they they'll talk bad about other ministries so that you could be so that you could be part of their ministry and then they want you to they're trying to deceive you and deception and try to build their ministry instead of building God's ministry. It's, it's, it's about building God's kingdom. Not, this is not my kingdom come. It's his kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It has nothing to do with my kingdom, my please disciple me YouTube channel, my please disciple me.com website. Sure. Those are, that's great to have these things as a ministry, but you don't follow my, you don't you don't worship my website and you don't worship my YouTube channel. Worship me. You worship God, right? So we want to be careful not to be caught in those because this is what happens. It becomes prideful when people do. It. People get prideful when they start growing and they start maturing in Christ. But just like the devil did, the devil knew everything about God. He was his God, God's right hand man. He was he was the uh, choir leader, you know, and. Look what happened to him. So, it says, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition, see, and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. So, we want to make sure that we're not, and this is another thing too, if, if you know, it's, it's the word of God. The Bible says that man shall not live Man shall live only on the bread, on the word, on the bread of life. Oh, man shall only live by bread of bread, the bread of God. Um, it, it's 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 by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what we want to make sure that we're doing. We're, that we're that we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, and and we're growing and maturing in Him every day, every day, every day, every day. Um, okay, the next uh, verse is right here in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. It reads, And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight. So we are to be abounding, growing more and more in love in the knowledge of God, in the insight of his word, more and more and more and more in his love, more and more in his love, more and more in, in the insight of his word, more and more in the knowledge of God, more and more in our prayer life. Just It's, it's just being saturated in, in the word is what we need to be. We need to be fully mature as Christians, like the Bible says. We need to be fully mature in Christ so verse 10 so that you may be able to discern what is best so discernment we need to have discernment that's so the more that we we know the Word of God the more that we know Jesus the more that we will be able to discern the difference between good and evil and and then we'll also the more Holy Spirit we have the more we'll be able to say no to the flesh and yes to the things of God. That's what it's all about, about denying our flesh, picking up our cross and following Jesus. And in verse 11 says that we are to be filled with the fruit of righteousness. Um, and the fruit of righteousness is, is, is patience and love and joy and long suffering and peace. It's in Galatians, it talks about the fruit of the spirit. But verse 11 says, being filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. So the, our, the righteousness does not come through us, does not come through our finances, does not come through what we own, does not come through our ministries, does not come through how, how mature we think we are, how smart we think we are, um, how, uh, you know, whether you're a church planter or you're a pastor or you're an evangelist or how big or how popular you are, that is not what the right, your righteousness is not in that. Your righteousness should be in Christ and Christ alone because our righteousness is, is the righteousness of Christ um, because that's what being a discipleship, a disciple is, is 
putting off the, the old rags of, of filth we used to have before we were before we were um, forgiven of our sins, before we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we confessed him as Lord, and, 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 and he gave us uh, the new heart uh, of flesh. It took up the heart of stone, and, 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 and now we're learning to grow and mature and, um, and, and be... Um, be righteous in his eyes. And it says to the glory and praise of God. So we want to be, let's read this again. It says Philippians chapter one, verse nine through 11. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. So we want to be pure and we want to be blameless and how do we how do we become pure and blameless? Well, what we just read, we want to be pure and blameless by having thankfulness, um, having appreciative, walking in faith, um, being together, uh, uh, building uh, our, our, each other up in love, supporting. Uh, it says being held together by every supporting ligament. All these three scriptures right here are key elements to discipleship. So. I would encourage you guys to, um, those of you who who are, who are growing in the Lord and, and who, who want to be more uh, holy and righteous and, and blameless before God, um, you know, write, take these scriptures and write them down. Write, write down these scriptures. Write them down on paper and read them and, and pray them and, and, and speak them out loud when you read it. Um, it's going to grow and it's going to build your faith, faith up. So... I'm going to go down here. So it says, number one, active in service. Active in service. Ephesians 4, chapter 12, and 16. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 12. So for 4, 12 is... Says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we are to be perfecting of the saints. Our job as disciples is to be perfecting one another for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We are that's what discipleship's all about, is to is to be perfecting one another. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And verse 16 says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Basically, in a nutshell, that is saying that we are to be working and striving and contending and living pure, holy, righteous, holy, righteous, holy, righteous, blameless, pure, holy, righteous, blameless lives unto God so that we could be so that we could be trees of righteousness that are standing firm and that when the storms come, we will not go from here and there and buckle and bend. And we might buckle and bend, but we're not going to break because Jesus has already won the victory. The devil is defeated. He is already a defeated foe. All we need to do is just keep our, our, keep our focus and our attention on Jesus and the word and doing what the Bible says and, and you'll be okay. Number two, united with other Christians. That's what we were talking about, being united with other Christians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 says, Till we all come into the unity of the faith, right? And of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Not just doctrinal unity, it says, there's a note here, but committed and connected in active fellowship. We want to be committed and connected in active fellowship. 
committed and connected in active fellowship. So we want to be con continually going to church, continually serving, continually reading our Bibles, continually praying, continually praying, continually doing the work of the Lord, continually walking in love. Number three, knowledge of the truth. Ephesians 4.13 and Philippians 1.9, we just read that. Able to distinguish truth from error. We want to be able to, to be able to distinguish truth from error. Now, how do we do that? We do that by the word of God, by um, by having discernment and knowing knowing the Bible. When when we when we know something's off, we just say, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Or, you know, I'm, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna actually look my scripture up and see see where that is. Because the Bible says that um, we're supposed to test the spirits. Um and how we do that is by we go back to the Word of God and see what the Bible has to say about whatever question you may have. And if you may be struggling with something you want, you have, you need an answer. Go to the Word of God. There's always gonna, you're going to find truth. The Bible is it's all truth. The Bible is full of truth. There's no error in the Bible. There's no lies in the Bible. It's all answers to your life questions, and and as, as answers on how to how to um, how to go to heaven and how to how to remain faithful to God. Um, B full understanding of the gospel of grace. So we need to be understanding of what the gospel of grace is. So let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter one. Verses 6 through 9. So it says here in Galatians chapter 1, 6 through 9. I'm going to read it. It says, I marvel that ye are so, so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. See, this is what happens when you're baby Christians. Uh, you're going to, you're, you're going to, uh, the Bible is supposed to make you feel uncomfortable when you're when you're born again Christian, and uh, that's why the Bible says that the baby baby Christians can't eat can't eat the uh, the meat of God. They can't stand even ten minutes of, of of me reading the Bible. A lot of people already fell off this teaching, and we're already thirty seven minutes in, and they didn't finish the rest of this to this teaching, and they they probably won't because the demons in them are. It's not the demons, but it's what well, yeah, it is basically the demons. It's it's they don't have they they don't have the maturity in Christ, and they're not trained in Christ, or they're not their spirit their their flesh is not trained and and being so look we're supposed to take authority over our flesh. The spirit in us is supposed to take authority over the flesh. The flesh is not supposed to take authority of the spirit. Because that's what happens. The flesh says, oh, I don't have time for this. I got to go do this. I got to go do that. Instead of finishing a, finishing a lesson, the, the, your, your spirit, your flesh will tell you to go somewhere else. And you're going to miss out on what the blessing is in this whole chapter. There's, there's, this is what happens. This is why we need to be careful not to fall in this category of Galatians that he's talking about. About saying that I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel um, because what happens is the, the devil uh, wants to always uh, wants to always make 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 a way for you to get away from from the bible jesus will always make a way for you to to get to the bible and to to overcome but the devil will always make a way for you to leave so you need to be able to discern and 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 put into subjection uh, the flesh by by knowing the gospel verse 7 which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of christ there that's okay that's that's that error that we're talking about but though we all we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you then that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed so anything that the devil, what's the, what the devil wants to do is the devil wants to um, make you to where you cannot understand the gospel. 
He's going to make it hard for you to understand. You're going to say, oh, I don't understand what that means. I don't understand. I don't understand what the Bible says. I can't, I can't understand it. I, I'm sorry when I said that it's the demons in you because it, it, that's just a, another uh, word that I use because um, I, I do a lot of deliverance ministry. And in reality, they are de demons, but they're, it's, it's, more, it's more just um, learning and understanding the, the gospel and allowing the grace of God to, 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 to transform your mind through reading, reading the word of God. So, um, so please forgive me, those of you who, who uh, feel offended if I said that you have demons. It's just, it's just um, we, have to be, we have to allow the, the truth of God's word to override the lie of the enemy. Uh, verse 9, as we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So that this is what my my job is um, with, with what I'm doing right now, uh, by spending my time to read and to um, explain uh, the, the gospel and, and this lesson to you guys is because um, a lot of people, they, they need help. They need help understanding the word of God. And that's what I'm trying to do through these lessons. So uh, that's what we want to be. We want to be careful. We want to make sure that we're reading and that we're being taught by the right people that are preaching, um, you know, the whole gospel and not just one sided gospel. A lot of times people will preach grace, the grace of God, and they don't preach repentance. Or there's a lot of people that preach only repentance and they don't preach the grace of God. Or there's people that only preach deliverance. All they do is deliverance, 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 deliverance. And they're not preaching the, the that, that's error. That's, that's, that's what they're talking about here, being able to distinguish the truth from error. So the knowledge of the truth, that's what we need to be, um, we need to be aware of. C says, able to teach others. So we want to be make sure that we're able to teach others. Um, and that is found in Ephesians 4.15. Uh, it says here, Ephesians 4.15 says, but, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So that that is, um, the head is Christ. The head is Christ Jesus. The, the main person that this whole gospel is talking about and trying to convey to us is, is trying to make us closer to Jesus and closer to eternity with Jesus. So we want to know everything about him and how we do that is by reading the Bible and understanding it, what it means and doing what it says. Number four says Christ likeness. We want to be Christ like people that that's what Christians are. The Christians are Christ like little ones. That's what Christians, that's what Christian means. Um, you know, we're not going to ever come to the knowledge of the fullness of Christ unless we, um, unless we, we have to start from somewhere. That's why we have to be born again. And we have to learn how to crawl and talk and walk and respond and act and do everything differently. Sometimes people won't get born again until they're in their fifties or sixties. And they're like, Oh man, this just isn't, isn't for me. You know what I mean? I, 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 um, you know, I mean, look at me, I'm, I'm going back to school for my GED. And I'm already going to be 47 years old. Um, and that's what being born again, it looks like is I'm going back and, and I'm, I'm to the things that I, that I, I failed to uh, finish uh, at an earlier age. And I'm doing that because, because God's given me the grace to do that. And, um, and then he'll get the glory and all this because there's just going to be more, more open doors as I, as I learn and, and I, and I submit to his, his will. In my life and that's what we're supposed to be we're supposed to be christ-like little ones that are um trainable and teachable so that we we could one day teach and train others um so, and, and it's to develop christ's nature that's that's what it says here it says also referred to as the fruit of the holy spirit so 
Let's go to um, Galatians chapter 5. This is what we're talking about earlier. I was mentioning the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going to get to go to right now. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. See, that, that right there, um, gentlemen and, and women, the uh, sisters that are, are listening to me um, teach this lesson, this is the fruit of the Spirit. This is what we want to have. And, uh, and, and, and all this can be attained because this is all Jesus. Jesus is love. Jesus is joy. Jesus is peace. Jesus is long-suffering. Jesus is gentleness. Jesus is goodness. Jesus is faith. Jesus is meek. Jesus is temperance. So he is all of these things. It says, and they that are, are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. So we need to be making sure that our, our flesh is crucified with Christ. And how would you do that? By submitting your, your will and your life to God, to Jesus. That's how you do it. And, it. and it's not something that happens overnight. It takes time. And that's why you need the body of Christ, like we've just been reading about. Um, and we need each other and for someone to talk to and, and, and pray for each other and, and, and go through life with each other. Because that's what discipleship's all about. Um, so C three C says able to teach others. You know, we want to be able to teach others. That's another thing Four. um, oh wait, we already, oh, so, oh yeah, for Christ likeness, Ephesians 4, 13 to develop Christ's nature also referred to as a fruit of the Holy spirit. That's what we just read five close walk with Christ. Um, read John chapter 15, verse 4 through 9. Let's, let's read it. John chapter 15, verse 4 through 9, says, Jesus, Jesus speaking, this is Jesus speaking. He says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the, br the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. We're going to go to verse 9. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So it's saying here that we are to bear much fruit, and that's how that's how others will know that we are we are uh, Christ's disciples is by by the fruit on our tree, on what we look like, how we respond, how we act, how we talk, everything, our whole life, people are, are watching us as Christians, and they and they're seeing if, if 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 we're just if we're faking the funk, or if we're really if we're really truly disciples of Jesus Christ. Like I've asked Christians out there that have been serving God for years, they say, "Are you a disciple?" They say, "No, I'm a Christian." I'm like, "Well, that's not what Jesus says for us to be. That Jesus says for us to be disciples." And to go in to make disciples of the nations, not to make Christians, because Christians are just people that believe in Jesus. Disciples are people that are, do what he says. There's a big difference. Um, verse 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. So it, how we are, to, how we are to, um, to bear fruit is to continue in the love of Jesus Christ to not only ourselves, but to God and to others. Um, it 
So it says here, abide is used seven times in six verses. Not just knowing about Christ, but knowing him personally. We want to know Jesus Christ personally on a personal level. Um, so that we can be, uh, so that we can be, um, servants of God and, and, and doing, um, doing what we're, what we're called to do. Number six says loving. We want to be loving. Seven, strong in the faith. Eight, thankful. We, we already read all these, all these verses. Number nine, personal holiness. We want to be walking in holiness unto God. Number 10, prayerful. We want to be, be, be praying all the time. Jude 20 says, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. If you don't know how to pray in the Holy Spirit, you know, I would, I would um, encourage you to, to, um, to ask God for the prayer language. Um, the Bible says that you ask anything in my name and he'll give it unto you. Just, you know, ask and, and he'll give it to you and, and, and be walking in holiness and, and in the fear of God and and, um, and, and, and be, get around people that, that know how to pray in the Holy Spirit. And, and God will show you how to do that, how to have that prayer language. Verse or number 11, close walk with the Holy Spirit. We want to be walking with the Holy Spirit closely all the time. We want to be walking with the Holy Spirit. Number 12, active in witnessing. We want to be actively witnessing to other people, you know, telling them that, that you know, telling them and uh, showing them um, Christ in us, the hope of glory, you know, that people are going to know um, that we're different, that we're Christians, that we're, that we walk in love by the way we conduct and carry ourselves. It says here to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 through 8. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and read that right now. First Thessalonians chapter 1. Uh, verse 7 through 8 says, So that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Acacia, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Mac Macedonia and Acacia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad. See, that's what we want to do. We want to be spreading, we want to be spreading the love of God everywhere we go, you guys. So that we need not to speak anything. So that that's the thing is is you guys know people like people that are like like Christians that are, people that are, are have been maybe someone in your family that's been a Christian for a long time and you guys reverence and respect them very much because you know that they've been living that lifestyle for a long time, right? Well, they don't even have to preach the message of, of Jesus to you. Their, their lives are 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 are, are daily. Um, witness that you know that they're actually Christians so that's how we want to actually be want to be mature in the Lord to that degree where we're actively witnessing 24 7 these uh, then are the qualities we are aiming to see produced in the lives of those we disciple this seems a daunting task but we must remember it is God's Spirit who is at work in them and in us. And he will bring this about if we allow him to work through us. Um, now we come to the heart of the matter. How do we do it? Okay, so I'm going to end, end this uh, this teaching here because it looks like I've already been in for 53 minutes. And I don't want to go over an hour on these teachings. So the next, uh, the next lesson will be the essential ingredients of the discipling process. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please comment on the videos. Um, and I thank you guys for uh, for supporting and, um, and praying for me and uh, encouraging me uh, in my walk in the Lord. And um, please reach out to me and, and uh, say hi. I, I like to get to know you guys and, and to build relationships with you guys and see how how we could be a blessing to one another and. Um, and growing and maturing in, in our uh, in our walk with the Lord. So, with that being said, uh, actually today is Christmas Day, Christmas evening. It's uh, December twenty fifth, Christmas two two thousand twenty two. It's currently eight forty one p.m. and 
Uh, I'm going to finish this video now. So Merry Christmas, you guys. And um, just keep being a disciple for Jesus. Make sure that nobody um, tells you other words. Otherwise, you, you guys are all um, righteous and holy and blameless before God. And we are all overcomers and victorious in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.